Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Blender 3.2 is finally here and this is the most recent release of the world's number one free and open source 3D software. Now, Blender 3.2 comes with a couple of nice and impressive features from cycles all the way to sculpting, down to geometry nodes and even the video sequence editor. Of course, there's lots of things to unpack for this and with that said, we're going to dive directly into Blender and take a look at some of the things that are brand new that you probably didn't see or maybe you're not going to find right here. And with that said, let's dive right in. With Blender simply open right here, let's take a look at some of the amazing things that now comes with Blender 3.2, the final release. So first off, let's talk about the user interface. If you click on file and click on new to open up a brand new file, you would now notice that the OneDrive has been added to the file browser. Now within the system list, you can now select the OneDrive and access files that you have on your OneDrive. At the same time, if you already have Blender files in your file browser, you can now simply click and drag directly into your viewport. Now, regardless of the fact that you could do a simple click and drag before, this now allows you to actually click and drag at once instead of doing the initial clicking. In this case, if I like to load the cat file, I can just simply click and drag at once and drop and load this in. Now, this is available across Blender as you can also do the very same thing with your asset browser. So if we go over to the asset browser, for example, and let's say we're thinking about changing the texture. We can select from any of these textures, click and drag and drop directly on the viewport. So instead of doing the initial clicking, you can just click and drag directly on the viewport and you have that right there. Now, something else which is very interesting to see is if you're thinking about replacing materials within your material slot, you can also do the very same thing. So I can also click, drag and just drop directly there instead of doing the initial clicking. And this is going to save a lot of time as it just makes the process even way interesting to work with. You can now simply bundle your collections and convert them to assets. So if I select the cat and select the pillow, for example, tap M on the keyboard, click on new collections and call this a cat and click on OK to create a cat collection. We can select that collection, right click, go all the way to Mac as asset and Mac this as an asset. Now, if we Mac it as an asset and go over to the current file, you would now notice that we have it right here alongside with a predefined thumbnail. So we can click, drag and drop directly within our scene. And we can also make some very interesting changes. And still speaking about the user interface, there is also a very cool improvement to the curves within the outliner. So for example, if we simply drop a curve and then we drop a surface and we drop a text, you would notice that these have individual outliner icons. Contrary to what we had before, where they all had the same icon, at this point, you can now see them for what they are. And still speaking about curves, there is a brand new tool that now exists within the curve tools. So if we simply create a Bezier and we press the tab key, you'd notice that we now have the curve pen. Now the curve pen is a very intuitive tool as this simply allows you create curves in situations like this. And at the same time, it also allows you to manipulate these curves. So you don't need to switch between one tool to another to simply manipulate curves, as you can easily do this wherever and however you want. So in a situation like this, if I would like to make changes to this, instead of switching and doing that, I can use the curve pen tool to simply select that. And at the same time, if I would like to make changes to the handle, I can also do this on the fly. Now, regardless of what you're working with, as far as you have the curve pen tool and you're looking at a curve, you can simply manipulate the curve point alongside with the handles. And this to me is a very intuitive tool as it's one tool that has multiple use cases. And with curves as part of the conversation now, let's talk about the motion path. So motion path has been updated. So what we have is a couple of new things that you can now do with your motion path. So for example, let's say you have an animation. So let's go ahead and create a keyframe right here. Let's make one at 100. So I'm just gonna move this over to a point like so. And we have that keyframe. And I'm just going to crank this all the way to this point. Actually, let's crank this all the way up and drag this right there and set another keyframe somewhere like so. So I'm just going to move this over to this point and we have another keyframe. Now, if you'd like to preview your motion path, you can simply go over to the object properties, scroll all the way down, go over to motion path, and then you can calculate your motion path. Previously, what you had was just a range that had to do with one all the way to 250. But right now there is a calculation sort of thing that is going on right here. So if you like to preview selected keys, all keys, or even the scene frame ranges, you can. Let's just simply click on the drop down, click on all keys, and then click on calculate. And once we click on OK, you can see all of the keys that we have going on right here. Now with the new update that is available, you can simply select a couple of keys. So I can select just these two keys, and then we can click on the drop down and click on selected keys and click on update path. Now, once we do that, you'd notice that the only motion paths that we're seeing are the motion paths 
that deals with the selected keys. Now, in most cases, you might also want to preview a couple of motion parts that doesn't necessarily deal with keyframes. And of course, you can proceed to do that. So what we can do is we can click on the drop down, click on the scene frame range, and I can use the start, of course, and then we can use the end to do that. Or you can go ahead and type that there. But I sort of found this one more effective. So we can set this, you know, to 500. Notice that we are not selecting the keyframes. We're only selecting the model, selecting the frame range that we want. And with this selected, we can click on update part. Now with that, you can now see what is going on between this section to this section of your animation. There is also a brand new update to the file formats that you can import in terms of text. WAF and WAF2 are open source font files that you can now use directly with Blender. And this makes sense owing to the fact that OTF and TTF files have been existing in Blender over time. In terms of pipeline and asset, the Wavefront OBJ import has been rewritten in C++, which actually makes it even way faster than the normal importer that was made in Python. So if you're thinking about importing stuff right now, OBJ files are now even way easier for you to bring in as this loads up faster with less memory and it simply saves you so much time. Now comparing this with what you had with Blender 3.1 and with the current version of Blender 3.2, it is just miles away. As you can see, the file that we loaded with Blender 3.1 actually struggled to load in while the file that we loaded in Blender 3.2 just simply loaded in like nothing. There's a couple of nice things that are now available for Grease Pencil. So for example, if you're working with Grease Pencil, and let's say we are trying to create something. I'm just going to go ahead and make this nice cup. Okay. So we're making this beautiful cup. This is, this is an art statement. Okay. So we have this beautiful cup right here. Let's also go in and do some nice stuff. Okay. So we have this right here. Now, if you create something like this, in most cases, you might want to go in and throw in a smooth modifier. Now the smooth modifier has a pretty nice cool feature that now comes with it. It is called the keep shape. So by default, if you're clicking on the repeat, you know, it's smoothing this entire thing and you're losing the essence of what you made. You can turn on the smooth shape and this can help you get a much more smoother looking object instead of just going all ghetto with it. So at this point, you can get something that looks pretty better than what you had before. And instead of typing this as rough as this, you can get something that looks pretty nice. Now, regardless of that, this also works, you know, if you choose to write a text or something like that. Now, the smooth modifier is not the only thing that you have here that is a brand new update. You also have the dot dash. So if we simply go over to the dot dash section, you can play with the dot dash and create some very interesting stuff. So you have like the gapping, so you can have like all this gapping. More graph guys, I mean, you can see some of the nice things you can do with it. And this is highly animatable. So at any point in time, you can simply click to add a keyframe, go over to a frame, say frame 80, and you know, go home with this and you have fun. And you can go back and forth with it and you have your simple animation happening. But then, regardless of the fact that you have this, let's back up a bit. So regardless of the fact that you have this, you also have the cyclic. So with the cyclic, you can also create some very interesting patterns. And this just simply approximates the distance between one curve, you know, the end of one curve to another, and it gives you a very nice looking shape. Along with that is the envelope modifier. The envelope modifier actually allows you to create some sort of hashes, which could either be cross hashes, normal hashes, on your drawings. And all of these are very interesting. Along with that is a couple of other modifiers and tools that are now available in Grease Pencil. So with that said, if you're also looking at the geometry node, there's a couple of updates that are now available in geometry node. And we also have the duplicate element, which is also a very interesting one. And we also have some updates to the sculpting. Now with the sculpting, there is updates to the painting. As we've already discussed about this one before, we're also going to do an extensive video where we'll talk about some of the new brushes and also how you can work with them. The painting tools are now here. Now, hopefully for those who are thinking about exploring this, you can also play with a couple of brushes that now comes with this. There's also the smear brush and the smear brush itself now has a few set of formation that you can work with, which includes the dragging, the pinching, and also expand. And if you're also thinking about masking by color, you can simply use the mask by color to mask certain region of your painting. At the same time, you can invert this mask however you choose and paint on given regions of your model. The color filter tool is also one which is very interesting as this can help you play with the hue, saturation, smooth, and also contrast several areas of your model. And for those who are into sculpting, Blender 3.2 ships with a 
beautiful remeshing tool which uses the voxel remesher and also preserves the attribute colors and this is perfect for those who are into texturing and painting as this will come in very very handy the masking tool is also very wonderful as this is also a beautiful tool that you might want to consider checking out and for those who are thinking about caustics you know you would like to render caustics is now here it is very interesting to see that blender 3.2 is finally shipping with caustic very impressive stuff and you can see what it looks like with blender 3.1 versus blender 3.2 and the differences are quite wild and we've also covered a full video about that along with this we've also talked about the light groups which is very impressive you can create light groups depending on what you're working on and at the end of the day you can also go over to the compositor and play with the light groups how you want with the example which we're having right here you can also tweak this to your liking, depending on what you like to achieve at the end of the day. And back here with the blog, you can also see that the light groups have the combined, the interior, the pool, the benches, and also the wall. And if you're working with volumes, VDBs now support motion blur. So motion blur for gas simulations and imported VDB volumes and now supported in Blender 3.2. So if you're into things like that, that is definitely something that you might want to consider checking out. There's also a couple of supports. The AMD GPU rendering for Linux is now available. There is also support for baking to UDIM tiles. There's an automatic on pause viewport when switching to render mode, which is definitely useful for performance. And for the most part, if you're thinking, about working with Alembic, there is now an enabled Alembic procedural for final rendering. So lots of nice things are available for cycles and for those working with AMD GPUs, and you know, like you remember I mentioned that, if you're working with AMD GPUs for both Windows and Linux, this is something that is available. The generations that are supported are the RDNA and RDNA 2 generations of discrete graphic cards and it makes sense to know that these include the Radeon RX 5000, RX 6000 series and the Radeon Pro W6000 series of GPUs. So this is more like it, but then there are also lots of more features and updates coming to the video sequence editor. So if you're working with the video sequence editor, then you might want to consider checking those out. There is some updates for the VR and for input and output, there is a couple of improvements. The FBX now has a couple of improvements that deals with support for cameras depth of field for both importing and exporting. There's also updates for imported animations of rig to have their f curves properly grouped by bones and this is also applicable to bvh as this is also an improvement that is with bvh there is a beautiful support for webp image format which actually works pretty nice so for those who have no idea what webp image format actually is the webp image format works similar to what you have with png but it compresses a bit more faster and generates a smaller file size and just like we mentioned, there is also a brand new experimental OBJ importer, which is definitely worth it. And for those who like to explore most of these things, links to this is going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. Lots of cool features, lots of nice things now available in Blender 3.2. And of course, if you like to take a look at any of this, or probably check out some of the other things that we've talked about, all of those are going to be in the description and do well to see them for yourself. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.